The New York Post posted this and said, WWE needs to look in the mirror after AEW star-studded free agency. This was in March 19th. And they got Osprey, Okada, and Monet, who... Again, I don't want to hate on the boys, but they ain't right. done. And then right. this free agency run, look at what Ethan Page has accomplished. Look at what the Tongans and Jacob Fatu has accomplished. Stephanie Vacair gets bigger pops than Julia in the NXT impact zone because TNA is crossing over with them. You got the machine guns who are really, you know, Nick Aldis said it. You guys have been brought into WWE to help like spark new life into this tag division. This Delta lady, I'm not overly familiar, Zarya or whatever her name is. Right. She... I mean, look at her right there. That picture says a thousand words. I mean, she looks like a star. Her versus Rhea Ripley one day. Um, very character. I didn't, I didn't catch focused. her height. Is she tall or something? Let me look it up. I will look it up. Delta. And while wrestler. you're at it, Bill, who, yeah. who, who wrote that New York Post article? I'm, very I'm actually not sure. She's 5'8". So, okay. All right. Yeah. I guess. And she's thick, man. 165 pounds, dude. Mm. You know, so okay. she's ready to go. Look at her arms, man. They look you nice in these pictures. Yeah. <laughs> okay. All right. After pack a lunch, bro. And yeah. so, yeah, I just think Four WWE conference. swept, man. Clean sweep. Yeah. For, I for mean, free agents. And you you had mentioned earlier about how Stephanie Vakur is um is a lot more popular than than uh Julia. And yeah. there's a stark reason why. If you yeah. zoom in on that picture. One person looks original. The other person looks like a carbon copy of Asuka. So now, I do agree with you in some regard. The goat I think horns, that sets her apart from everybody exactly. on the roster. And, like, dude, when she comes to the ring, she doesn't do – she just walks in and puts a one-up, but not like Roman Reigns. She just, like, puts a one-up. Right. That's all she does, and it's just very unique, and you are right. And even they had the Kabuki Warriors – uh, square off sort of like backstage on NXT. They had a moment where Vacker and right. Julia like cross paths and they eyed each other up and I'm like looking at them going, yeah, Julia would fit right into that faction tomorrow. Yep. And I do think she has something about her that sets her apart, like sort of the faces she makes and stuff. It sort of does. She has this unique like Nakamura thing to where he's sort of uh, set apart from the other Japanese wrestlers, in my opinion, too. Oh, we've seen Kyrie. We've seen, and I'm not pulling like a Jim right. Corn. Oh, they're all Japanese schoolgirls, but the you're frill, right. All the fur coat, the, the fur, pinkish the hair. Fucking, yeah, the makeup, the pinkish hair, yeah. the whole like manner is the moving around methodically right. in that aura. Right. Whereas you're right, Vacker comes out. It's your hamper come to life. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and and Vacker comes out, and and not only that. She's tremendous in the ring. She has a great frame for her short five-foot body. And not only that, she can pick these girls up, and she doesn't feel undersized when she's wrestling people taller than her. She's always in the right spot. She knows how to grab a hold. She knows how to just do a roll-up. She knows how to work the crowd. Uh, it's She sells her ass off. It's been her dream her whole life to be in WWE. And, um, and then you have this Zarya girl show up at the end of the show. Three huge women coming in to inject huge new life into this already crazy NXT women's roster. I'm sitting here like they got to call a batch of these girls up. No, I also been saying that SmackDown and NXT are going to swap talent like all the time while Raw sort of stays its own thing. And I think we are seeing more and more of that to back that theory up. Cody Rhodes believes NXT isn't a developmental brand anymore. He says, uh, particularly with uh, Matt Bloom and Michaels as a talent and current main roster, NXT can be kind of intimidating. It's not really a developmental anymore. It's almost a grooming ground. Oh, so a developmental <laughs> uh, for these monsters who are going to come up and stand across the ring from you when they've been trained by Shawn Michaels. We're definitely preparing the next generation of superstars, etc. cetera. And uh, yeah, I think we're going to see SmackDown and NXT crossover more. And um, just what, it, like, I love NXT. It's my favorite wrestling show. But dude, there's so many women, period, who don't can't get camera time, let alone the dudes on that show, too an all women's WWE show on Wednesdays or what boys, what do you think about that awful? <laughs> Cody Rhodes is wrong, by the way. I mean, my goodness. Yeah. You're going to start off by saying it's a developmental brand or not, not a developmental brand. It absolutely is a developmental brand. I mean, come mm -hmm. on, Cody, get with the times of a man. I mean, don't read every word on the memo. You got to yeah. ad lib. And if something looks stupid on the paper, you got to be like, I'm not, that doesn't work for me, brother. Yeah. But, uh, you gotta be like, you gotta be like, oh, I need to learn Chinese. 
No. Yeah, yeah uh, but, exactly. But he literally calls it a grooming ground. Yeah, so even I worse. Call- it's, yeah. it's so much worse than a developmental ground. Like, come on in here. To this white yeah, ground. Okay, this is the grooming know. ground. That's when the plane is touched down. You That's the a lollipop. <laughs> yeah, dude. And so I, to me, when he, it's like grooming ground, though, it's like, oh, so it's a developmental. Oh, a grooming ground, sort of like a I'm developmental. I'm the American Nightmare for kids. <laughs> <laughs> no ditty. You know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, Jesus. right. The fuck a grooming ground that sounds like a room in Diddy's house, you know? Yeah. Jesus Christ. <laughs> but yeah, awful. What do you think of the prospect of an all women show for WWE? Put it on Wednesday nights and just don't go ahead. do it. Why? Don't do it. They don't beat dynamite of berries their women, right? Say again. Because if they don't beat dynamite and let's say they put like Charlotte Flair on that bitch, it just buries the, the women superstars, right? Is that what great you- point? Yeah, that's a great point that I didn't even think of. But yeah, yeah, no, you don't want to isolate. You don't want to divide your fan base. And by do by having a woman's only, you're going to be struggling just like the uh, WNBA was struggling for a long time until they had a big star or two big stars, apparently. But like, yeah, you can't. No, I would I wouldn't risk it. Keep it as is. Grow what you've got going on. It's working. They obviously got seven hundred two thousand people last night. Uh, and that was up from last week. So, you know, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Don't try to create a new, a new show. Maybe not a lot of people. It, well, excuse me. I got a question. Is yep. Nikita Lyons tracking? Is Jada Parker tracking? Are they bumping the uh, the, the, the uh, viewership when they come on screen? And do you really want a whole hour of that every week? Because you know it's going to be an hour. Because if it's two hours, it's overkill. Well, speaking of viewership awful, uh, Brad Becker tweets this out. Shout out Brad Becker, probably in the chat. WWE NXT, 720,000 uh, viewers. So it got a nice bump from last week. I thought it was uh, 702,000. Seems that, that num- this number seems to be in great dispute. Okay. I saw Julian Weeks had uh, posted 200, excuse me, 720,000. But I also saw Russell Nomics, they posted 702,000. They make some sort of correction. Somebody made a typo somewhere, but either way, it's yeah. a big spike from the yeah, last really. uh, week where Meltzer was like, see, I told you it would settle in and I'm a genius and you're all uh, the best guys, Tony Khan. So Bobby Lashley speaks on the Hurt Business not reuniting in WWE, says the new regime wasn't high on him at all. And he goes, it was kind of a spit in the face. We were never in front of a live crowd. During the pandemic, a lot of guys sat at home. I'm not going to do this or that. And it was us saying, it's work. We're going. We did everything. We were on half the shows most of the time. Half the show most of the time. We came out of the pandemic and people started resurfacing. Oh, I'm ready to work. What about the guys who were putting the time in during this dangerous time? True that, though. We got overlooked. Mm-hmm. That was a little bit of a spit in the face, he says again. I think we could have come back and done some big... Uh, things together they just didn't want us different strokes for different folks different people like different things when the regime changed the regime wasn't too high on me at all so uh what i had heard was lashley had like a big ass contract mill it was like a vince deal so it was like millions Mm -hmm. of dollars limited dates already and then pretty much the like as what you said earlier probably they looking at the analytics and they're like okay is he worth like three million or whatever you know Maybe not yeah. three million, whatever. So, right. Um, yeah, I, I don't know. It sucks. They felt like uh, disrespected. I would have. What loved do you think to Tony see- paid him? I'm so sorry. No, it's okay. I would have loved to see Hurt Business get back together for sure. But what would um, Tony pay Lashley? Yeah, what do you think? Two, he got him. Two million, I bet, a year. Three million a year. Um, how many matches? How many? How many dates? Listen, if they're the guys that are going to come in and beat the Moxley crew. Mm-hmm. He's probably well because you got to think, man. You have everyone. Like, what is he paying Shelton? Half a million to a million, right? At least, do you think? Probably. Yeah. Probably. So then MVP, probably the same, maybe even a little more. Because uh, he does shit backstage. A little less. Little less. Even, I'm not. Okay? I'm not really giving MVP all that much money. I mean, okay. What's you know what I mean? And you wouldn't I could see him working his way into like a creative role or something, though. You know what I mean? Or like, hey, I'm backstage. I'm also a producer. You know, I could totally see him okay. getting Tony's money, but maybe not. Right. Uh, so he's a talent and a backstage guy. I don't know anything. I have no insight on that, but I'm just saying. So then right. Lashley, I don't know. He's a two million guy to Tony, at least three. You got to think if Moxley's making like three to something, he'll give Lashley a little less than Mox because Moxley's like his guy, you know? 
Right. Yeah. Yeah. So what's, I don't the know a- what's the average age of the group? God. I don't know. Last year's like 52 or something. Yeah, I bro. know. <laughs> 52. <laughs> is he really? Let's look I at it. I don't know how old he is. Bobby Lashley, age. He is 48 years old. Sorry, okay. Bobby. Uh, okay. okay. Um, so let's look at MVP age. MVP age here. MVP wrestler age. Is there, uh, fi- he's 50. So, mm. um, and then let's mm. look up Shelton Benjamin age. He's 49. So they're all 50, mm. bro. Pretty much so, and I'm not hating on them, mm. man. They Benjamin looks like he could clear out. Their average age is 49. Exactly. <laughs> like, come on now. But speaking of keeping kayfabe, man, like here's Dom and Liv out together. Jesus Christ, his wife. I think I tweeted out. I was like, his wife is the uh, is the, the best at keeping kayfabe or whatever. Um, it's cute. It's crazy that they just like know to be in in their gimmicks at like a hockey game like that the whole time. Right. Like she didn't prep him there. They know to do it. His wife's okay. That's just crazy. Good for Dom living, living his best life. Right. Um, yeah. So uh, the new name for Delta in NXT appears to be Zaria. It, did they say it chat chat? Let me know. Did they say it on the air? Cause I didn't actually hear them. I did see her like debut, but they were just like, she's here. So Zaria or Zaria, I don't know. I hope it's pronounced Zaria because Zaria is kind of like Saraya, Zaria. I don't know. But she's just got a hell of a look, man. I think she's going to do wonders in the women's division. And it's a different look, too, because it's very like college athlete, high schoolish type of thing in NXT. And she doesn't really fit that model, you know. So, you know, Vacker and Julia barely do as well. So maybe Delta's just like have a few matches, get called up pretty quick. She's got size. You need challenges for people like Naya. Who knows? We'll see how good she can work. Um, but again, I'm not I think a bunch of these women gotta get called up though, uh, from NXT sooner rather than later because or if that call up thing's not a thing and they just sort of split NXT SmackDown, like I've been predicting, and we see that with Jakara and uh, La- uh, Lash. But either way, I digress. What do you guys think? Some people are saying it's an L. We see underneath here, people are laughing at like, um, you know, her name and stuff like that. Do you guys think mm-hmm. Zarya is a name or? Well, it beats Daria. Yeah, <laughs> that was a good show though. Wasn't that the name of the show? Yeah, Daria. Mm-hmm. It was yeah, okay. So it was all right. Yeah, George. What about you, buddy? Do you like Zarya? There are worse names. Yeah. I'll leave it at that. Yeah. <laughs> and I wonder why they changed it from Delta. A lot of people are asking and stuff. I don't know. Uh, someone either has a trademarked or it's just they're like, okay, Delta. I mean, uh, who knows? There's a myriad reasons why they could. Um, But Netflix Raw is reporting. Oh, and I called this too. Your boy, I called this from day one. Netflix Raw, unless this is false from P-Dub Insider. But they go, Netflix Raw is reportedly leaning more towards three hours with potential flexibility to change duration depending on what's needed that week. What's Phil been saying for a month? I'll tell you what we've been saying here at P-Dub T, folks. Yo, it'll be 240 one week. It might be 210. It might be three hours. It might be 310. If The Rock comes back and wants to go 10 minutes long, don't matter. They don't got to play this overrun game. Raws will be anywhere from two and a half to three and a half hours is my prediction, all depending on what's needed to be put on the show. So Bound for Glory is expected to be TNA's highest grossing live event in 2024, as well as their highest paid ticket total for the state's This calendar year, their previous record for 2024 was last month's Victory Road in Texas. Texas, B. Now, here's the thing. Um, Yeah, Moose Knuckle says Netflix isn't buying less of a show. Yeah, they're absolutely not. You know, so it'll be closer to three hours. But either way, though, um, shout out TNA. And this is what I mean. They make all this money. They could be hiring more for, and I'm not saying hire all the free agents, but there's people who could be featured. Like, I think Hurt Business would be better in tna personally and um yeah it's it's just tony khan's pricing these people out and stuff but if tna stays on this path they could blow up and be the number two next to wwe honestly it could happen if they stay this course um but i think maybe the wwe relationship sort of does keep them under wwe's thumb a little bit at the same time so i don't know shout out tna though they're doing fantastic stuff and Maple Phil, Leaf Pro as well. What's up? Phil, do you think uh, Styles goes to TNA before he retires? 
I could see him not even doing a one-off match, but like doing their Hall of Fame thing or whatever, you know. But I don't see him like going to TNA. Maybe sure. have one match, but against who? Like Josh Alexander? Just yeah, do I don't know. In just, WWE. Just a thought. Yeah, you could just do that in WWE. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. 